What's up guys, this is Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. Today I'm gonna give you a bumper to bumper tour in depth of my 1991 two wheel drive Volkswagen Vanagon Westfalia camper van. So starting here at the front bumper of the van again, one of the first things that I've done is I got rid of the stock plastic bumpers and I've got some laser cut steel bumpers on there. Mounted to the front of the bumper is a high lift jack. We spent a lot of time out into the back country, out on the trails and the off road. High lift jack has come in handy on a number of times. That's mounted right here to the front of the bumper. Moving on to the next item that's mounted high atop the front of my van again is a 783 watt LED light bar producing 78,000 lumens of light. That thing is game changer when it comes to hitting the long dirt roads out into the dark back country where these stock Volkswagen headlights just won't keep up. So one of the most important things when it comes to getting out in the backcountry, like I'm always stressing to you guys about is a good set of all-terrain tires. On here I've got the General Grabber ATXs sitting on some 16 inch alloy wheels. These are the Mercedes-Benz replicas, but they actually come from Go Westy. On a van again, one thing that makes it possible to run oversized tires is the use of suspension lift. On my van, I've got 1.5 inch Go Westy lift springs front and rear. In the front, I added a little extra spacer at the top of the lift spring. To keep my alignment in check, I also installed some Burley Motorsports upper A-arms that are absolutely key for keeping your alignment in check when it comes to putting a lift on your Volkswagen van again. Also adding to the ride, the comfort, and the handling is a set of four Fox shocks that are installed on all four corners. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the cockpit and we're gonna talk about the driving components that go into handling and controlling such a hippie tank. This is the control center, the cockpit. This van right here is a two-wheel drive automatic transmission. It's a three-speed. It's got one speed in reverse, which is kind of typical. I think they all do. But three speeds going forward. You got three speeds forward, one speed backwards. Does that make it a four-speed? I don't think so. Anyways, here at the front of the van, we've got a custom stereo. It's a Pioneer CD player, Bluetooth, which does not come stock in 1991. Hate to tell you, I don't think Bluetooth was actually even a thing back then. Also mounted up here on the dash, I've got a nice cell phone holder, hands-free. The cool thing is you can watch Live in the Van Life videos while you're driving down the road though. That's cool. Moving forward to the other things up here in the cockpit, we've got a custom installed Cobra CB radio. Now I grew up with CB radios and those things are perfect for communicating with other vans that you're traveling with. It's a handy tool when you're out off the grid where cell phones just don't work. My stock Volkswagen horn button has totally gone kaput. Therefore I have installed a custom horn switch up here on the dash. That way when the time comes I can employ my road rage using my custom installed horn button. When it comes to the off-road driving and the LED light, I've got a custom LED cutoff switch installed in the dash as well. Now, one thing that is important when it comes to controlling this hippie tank down the highway is having a good set of cup holders. They didn't actually install any sort of cup holder when it came from the factory. Maybe it was because they didn't want to encourage drinking and driving. You don't want to drink and drive, you might hit a bump and spill your drink. It's not a good idea. So what I've done is I've taken this one step further and I installed my own set of custom cup holders down here on the floor between the seats. Not only did I install 
one cup holder, but I actually installed two cup holders because what's a van adventure if you don't have a partner next to you on that trip? Moving beyond that, we've got some custom rubber mats so when you're in and out of the mud and the snow, you're not trashing your carpets. All right guys, so in this next room of my home on wheels, the living room is where all the magic of van life goes down. Come on in and check it out. So right here inside the living room, the number one key to van life is organization, keeping things simple, keeping things clean. Living in such a small space like that, if you don't stay on top of it, you're gonna find yourself miserable and just not happy. It comes from the factory outfitted with cabinets which make it nice to be able to put all the essentials for van life away, out of sight, out of mind. One of the things that I find really useful here is the Venture Libre Westy Cocina. This is a great way to be able to organize stuff like kitchen utensils, forks, spatulas, all sorts of stuff. This thing is made to snap on and snap off. Just a cool way of being able to keep things accessible and organized. So here inside this door, this is normally the stock location for the refrigerator. However, I have actually removed the refrigerator so that I could install the diesel tank for the heater that I have installed here in the van. It actually opened up all of this storage. Now I store cups, drinks, the jet boil, a few uh, freeze dried meals. It also has my cast iron skillet that hangs right inside here. So this has become quite an essential storage location now that the refrigerator has been removed. Also a unique feature in these vans is the installation of a propane two-top burner stove right here underneath the top countertop. And uh, this just becomes a normal countertop for me. Stores my Bluetooth, my flashlight, everything else right here. So we can actually swivel this passenger seat around and it opens up space for the living room. As you can see here, it actually converts this very small space into quite a usable space. You can have two people on the couch, you can have one person here in the passenger seat. The driver's seat also turns around halfway into a captain's chair position. Just makes for entertaining here in a small space actually doable. Okay, so you're in a small space, you're off the grid, you're mobile you've got a home on wheels. One of the other key components is 12 volt power. You're gonna need an auxiliary battery system that's gonna run all of your house accessories. That's from the driver's seat back. Here in my van, I've taken a little bit different approach when it comes to an auxiliary 12 volt power system. I'm actually using a Kodiak portable battery pack made by Energy Solar, and I've got that installed underneath my cabinet down below here. Now the cool thing about the Kodiak is the fact that it's got A, the built-in battery, B, a built-in inverter, C, a built-in solar charge controller. So all inside this box, I can run AC accessories, I can run 12 volt accessories, and I can also hook up a solar panel system that will actually help keep the Kodiak charged. Coming off of the Kodiak battery system, I've actually wired in a fuse block that powers my whole entire house system here in the back living room portion of the van. One approach that I've taken is to try and focus most of my accessories here in the van based off of a five volt USB system. So many accessories are available today that charge or are powered right off of USB. So here, in two different spots of the van, I've got two different banks of USB power outlets. 
Off of those USB power outlets, I power my LED lighting systems. I power my Bluetooth speaker system. I've got a flashlight that is also charged by USB. Of course, cell phones and tablets are all powered off of USB. And those accessories tend to be quite efficient, which is great for van life. No matter what part of van life you're in, you're gonna need lights. Now, rather than just having the regular stock lighting system, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to go with something that was inexpensive as well as low on energy consumption. After quite a bit of research, I had determined that I wanted to do a USB powered LED light system. So I've got the LED strips that actually can set multiple different colors. That's pretty fun when you're having cocktails in the van, listening to some tunes, hanging out with friends. Uh, but then I've also got the LED string lights, which are nice for setting the mood if you're out in the wilderness or out overlooking a cool view and just want to chill out and relax. This has been a cool setup. I really enjoy it. Just because you live in a van doesn't mean you have to be lame and boring and all that stuff. So of course there's the whole entertainment aspect of living in a van. The good old Sony Bluetooth speaker right here comes into being an important part of entertaining when it comes to van life. The cool thing about the Bluetooth, they're battery powered. Even when you gotta charge them, they're running off a of USB low voltage very efficient they're portable they hook up wirelessly right to your cell phone they just make for quick easy and simple entertainment when it comes to listening to tunes and also so that i don't have to worry about my bluetooth accessory flying around my van i've gone ahead and stuck a piece of velcro underneath and it sticks right here to my van staying nice and stable Back here at the back with the bench seat is where we start going from living room mode into bed mode. But before we do that, I'm going to talk about the storage that is available under the back seat. Underneath the back bench is where I store extra camera gear, extra clothes that I'm not using. It's also where I put my dirty laundry back here in the corner. That way it's tucked away, out of sight, out of mind, and not being a nuisance when it comes to van life. This is also where I installed my diesel powered heater. Now this heater has been absolute key to surviving the winter temperatures up here in the Pacific Northwest and staying comfortable here in van life. To go from couch mode into bed mode, we're gonna flip the seat up, we're gonna pull back, now you can see this couch now lies flat and it's ready for all of the bedding to come down into bed mode. So for the bedding here, down underneath, bottom layer, I've got a Mexican blanket that lays down. Then I've got a two inch mattress topper foam from Costco that goes over the top of that. Then we've got a nice comfortable comforter that goes down here. This is basically the surface that I sleep on. From here, I've got a nice down comforter and that right there is bed mode. Now one of the things that have really made these vans iconic over the years is their ability to actually pop up the roof. Let's check it out. Now that right there is seriously one of the coolest things about these vans. It does one of two things. A, it gives you standing room right here in your van. I mean, look at all this room. I am standing in the living room of my van. I can reach up without touching the ceiling. The other cool thing, this platform where you guys are sitting right now, that whole thing folds back and it folds into another bed so you can actually sleep two people up here in the top. You can sleep two people in the bed down below. That gives you room to sleep four people in a Volkswagen hippie tank. If that ain't cool, then I don't know who you are. Next up is gonna be the ARB awning. Oh. 
when you're out in the wilderness, you're chilling out for a day or two and you wanna just spread out the living room, just like that, in a matter of seconds, you can deploy the ARV awning. It gives you shade, it gives you shelter from the snow, rain, and it extends your living room out just a little bit more here on the van. It's an awesome, inexpensive way to up your van life game. All the way here at the very back of the van, is where the power plant sits. Now this thing is powered by a 1996 Subaru EJ22, which is a 2.2 liter, four cylinder motor that came out of a Subaru Legacy sedan. This power plant conversion took it from a stock 90 horsepower up to about 140 horsepower, which is a pretty dang good power upgrade for a big old heavy box shaped van. Right here on the back cabinet, I've got just about every tool that you could possibly need to work on a Volkswagen van again. All nice and organized right here by the Venture Libre Westy Bravo. Here in this cabinet, more storage of all extra goods. I've got camping stuff like a propane bottle top burner stove, a propane lantern. Down here, all the extra fluids that you could need to maintain and top off your van again. Extra tools. Up here in the top, I keep a hammock. Also extra parts all right here in the back cabinet. And as we finish up the bumper to bumper in-depth tour of my van, we end up here at the back where it is yet another laser cut steel bumper. This time it's got an eight foot steel whip mounted to it. That's the antenna for my CB radio. I want to thank my helper, Jaden. This is my 16 year old son. Say what up, Jaden. What up guys? He's been an awesome help today directing this shooting it and making sure that I'm staying on track. It was Jaden's idea to do a van life tour. Special shout out to him for helping me out here today. If you guys like this video, make sure and hit the like button. Leave your comments down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it because that's what's gonna notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. Guys, peace out. Keep on trucking. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. How was that? <laughs>